Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how to use the sheet metal function in Onshape to generate surface developments for um, different parts that you might have in your graphics course. So starting off with something very simple, here's a cylinder. Uh, what we need to do to make that into a sheet metal part is we need to slice it down the middle, convert it to metal and then we can unwrap it, unroll it so that it becomes a flat pattern. So first thing you want to do is to create a really small cut that's going to go right down, um, which if you can imagine it in the metal room, you'd need to snip it right through in order to unwrap it. So let's draw a, a sketch on the front plane. Um, and I'm just going to draw a box, a rectangle is fine. As long as it goes over the um, you know the edge wall, then it doesn't matter how big it is. And I'm going to extrude, subtract that shape. And I'm going to make it symmetric and make it as a really small, so 0 0.5 or even, even smaller. I'll do that so that you can see what, what we're doing. Um, and you'll see that I've now got a slot, a little thin slot cut through there. So if that was a real bit of metal, I could now unroll it. I should just say you'll need to make sure that you start with a shelled part. Um, <coughs> and again, I've made that 0.5mm thick, that shell. So uh, in Onshape, now what we need to do is to select the sheet metal part functions up here. So the first one we need to do is to actually turn it into a sheet metal model. Now Onshape does things slightly differently to some other CAD software in that rather than turning the, that actual model, the, this, this sort of surface and wall, into a sheet metal part, what it's going to do is it's going to wrap it in metal. So if we had a block, for example, we could say um, create a little box that would fit around that, that block. So that might be useful for other kind of situations. It's a little bit awkward for this, but we can still use it. So if we select um, that uh, sheet metal model uh, option there, it's going to ask us to select the part. Now what it's going to do when I click this is it's going to generate a 0.5mm thick, because I've set the thickness here, a 0.5mm thick bit of metal that's going to cover the outside surface. But it's also going to cover the inside surface this sort of top skinny ring surface, the same on the bottom, and it's even going to put one down each of these two surfaces of the cut. So if I just click that now, you'll see it generates it. So we've got, this is the outside bit, that's the top little ring, there's a bit there that's the, the inside surface, and then in here there's two more um, that are the uh, surface from the that, that slot. So it's basically wrapping every single surface with a little bit of metal. Now we don't want that, we just want one, so it probably could be the, the outside or the inside surface, we just want one of those because um, that's what we're going to use to to unwrap to create our, our surface development. Now either we can just say that's fine, uh, in which case we end up with all these extra parts which we can hide, so I was to hide that, yeah, and I'll just keep going until we find there, well that's hidden the outside one, or we could right click and we could delete those parts. Um, that's one option. I think that's a little bit untidy. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into the sheet metal model here and I'm going to exclude the faces I don't want. So I've selected that there. If I zoom in now and just go onto the top, you'll see this bit here disappears. So I don't want a bit of metal on that surface. I also don't want a bit of metal here on this vertical surface. And if I just go that way, I don't want it on that surface either. So now you can see I've cleared the, the gap. You can see these two here, that's that's the bit that's going around the, the inside and this is going around the outside. I'm going to exclude the inside surface and there's one more, I've still got two parts here, look, and the, the last bit here is the um, is the bottom surface. So if I do that, what I've now got is I've just got the sheet metal that's wrapping around the outside of my, of my shape and you can see that I've just got one part. So if I go tick, then that is giving me that sheet metal part. So that now is sheet metal model, one part, and over here on the right hand side I've now got there's four icons now, usually there's only three, and this one here you can see is the sheet metal table and flat view. If I click on that one it's going to generate me a little surface development. Obviously this one here if I unroll it is just a rectangle so that's why I'm just seeing a rectangle there. So that's generating the surface development. If I was to have made a, a cut through it for example then it would that would be reflected in the surface development too so you can get more complicated shapes but the principle is shell it cut a thin little slice out of it convert it to the sheet metal work out which surfaces you want to be included and then you can generate your flat pattern from it now if I wanted to put that into a drawing I could go to a drawing sheet here 
Now I can drop the views in of the uh, folded part, the, the, the cylindrical shape as, as per usual. You'll see because we've cut it that will show in your drawing but if you make that as small as possible then it's not going to be as visible um, or you could in fact I guess have a totally separate part. Um, but we can also now insert here uh, the flat pattern. There's another option as well as your student parts and your assemblies there you can select flat patterns. If we get the simple cylinder you now see you've got a flat pattern part which is going to be that rectangle that we saw earlier. So we can now put in flat patterns, surface developments uh, of, of cylindrical shapes. Obviously any changes you make here, if we update them, that's going to update our uh, surface development too. Okay, so I've got another shape that I'm going to have a, a look at here, which is a, a pentagon. So I've got a little pentagon here, it could be a hexagon, it could be a, 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 a um, just a cuboid. Point is this time we've got corners, rather than just that one cylindrical shape with one surface. We need to shell it as before, but this time we don't need to uh, to create a cut unless you want to break the the shape. For example, here I'm gonna when I unfold this, I'm gonna unfold it from from that edge or from one of the edges. Um, if you wanted to do it somewhere else, you would need a cut. But if you watch, you'll see what I mean. So as before, we need to go to the sheet metal model, and it's gonna create once I've selected the part, it's gonna add a, a sheet of metal on um, every surface basically, sorry just hide that out of the way. Um, it's going to add the inside and the outside of this edge, the top and the bottom for all five sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exclude, so if I zoom in here I'm going to exclude the top, I'm going to exclude the inside edges, um, and I'm going to exclude the bottom as well. And I'm going to exclude, n uh, and that's it. So I should have, I've got five sides, so I should have five parts. There we go, so I've got those. Now I'm going to, okay, that, that's grand. Um, however, those parts are all totally disconnected. So previously, um, because it was a cylinder, they were all connected. So I can't unfold that because they're not actually joined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my sheet metal model, and this time I'm going to add an edge here. Um, and I'm going to make uh, the bend radius quite small and I'm simply going to select the the um, sort of joining the joining corners so if I select those those edges what it will do as you can see if I zoom in it will I've clicked the wrong one there uh, this is the one I'm looking for it's going to create a um, fillet it's going to actually connect those bits together and I've got to do this one here and I uh, have that's it for me now I'm not gonna do the last one see I've got one part here it starts here it goes all the way around and it stops there if I leave the edge that is the point at which we're gonna unfold the model so I've selected the vertical edges in between the, the sort of plates if you like it's given me a tiny little curve and what I can now do is if I go to my sheet uh, my flat view rather, it's going to give me my shape when it is unfolded. So one, two, three, four, five sides. Now if I go back to my uh, drawing, I can insert as before the sheet pattern, flat pattern rather, uh, this one is a pentagon and there it is, there's the model. And once it has just done its, I'm going to reduce its size a wee bit, I'll drop it in here. Now one glitch, if you like, and certainly with regards to British standards um, with Onshape, is that the line it shows us is not a fold line, which should have double dashed, it's a centre line. I can't find a way of changing that. So if you were presenting this work, you'd need to either make a note of that, or you would need to use a secondary software to modify that, li modify that line type. Uh, we've also got Ben notes here telling us which direction they go and what angle. If you just right click on the view, you can hide those, hide those bend notes like that and they disappear. So there we've got a flat pan, although as you can see that should be a fold line and it isn't. So we can do this then for cylinders, we can do it for shapes with edges. Cylinders we need to cut, um, hexagons and other shapes like that, we can just not join up the, the one of the corners and it will then naturally unfold from that point.
So here we've got a, a watering can sort of sort of thing with a, a spout coming off at an angle, and we want to see what the surface development of this part looks like, so we can determine this this sort of intersection detail. So we're going to do this in exactly the same way as the previous two uh, simpler examples. We're going to need to shell this as as we have done already. We're going to need to cut it uh, at the line where we're going to unfold it and then we're going to convert it to a sheet metal part. So if I just hide that, that other bit just so we can see it more easily, um, I'm going to take a slice um, through the right hand plane and it doesn't really matter what the shape is as long as it's going to overlap the, um, the wall, the, the sort of wall thickness here. So if I just did a line down somewhere down the middle that would um, work that would work fine so we're going to extrude subtract it's going to be symmetric and it's going to be 0 0.5 and that should give me a little slot up the middle so next we need to go back to our previous example of the surface uh, sorry sheet metal uh, model conversion so we're going to select the parts I'm going to remove the faces I don't want, which is the inside face, the um, edge face, the end sort of edge face here, and the inside of the um, slot that I've cut on both sides. So I should have now oh, missed it. I should now only have one part here, which is this this outside surface. So that's grand. Okay, that and there it is. There's my there's my spout. Now, um, so same process as before. If I now come to my my model, I just want to show you a detail that you need to consider when you're putting maybe uh, dimensions on one of these parts. So when I modelled it previously with a solid spout, it will had a diameter here of 50. Excuse the um, lack of centre lines and things. I haven't finished the drawing. That's my um, my excuse. If I update that now, because we've wrapped the um, sheet metal on the outside of this uh, spout the new size comes in at 51. Now if that was a drawing that needed to be presented accurately what you would need to do is go back to your watering can and you would need to find the extrusion where you generated the spout and you'd need to reduce that um, accordingly so that that comes in at the uh, correct dimension if I update that now that should say 50. That's, a, just, that's just a thought okay um sometimes this line doesn't appear here in which case what you need to do is to right click and show part intersections that will give you that nine line nice and tidily um and once you've done that you can add in your surface development so we're going to go surface development and we're going to go the watering can and the flat pattern and that should give us the the size there make that a bit bigger so we can see it so there it is. So the only limitation I've found, or further limitation I've found, is I've not managed to make this sort of um, process work with a, a tapering cylinder. So if you made that uh, narrower at one end than the other, this uh, sort of unwrapping sheet metal part doesn't work. Um, but for, for straight stuff like this, it seems to work quite well. So I hope that's helpful. Um, yeah, enjoy having a go.